Hello my photographic friends, welcome and I hope you are doing well. Today I have a, I think it's a very cool episode and I would like to share with you something very very uh, important. I would like to talk about a way to photograph from home. And no, I'm not talking about photographing inside your home or apartment. Okay, maybe not photographing, but practicing photography from the comfort of your home. And this is, I have to say that what I'm going to share with you today, I think is one of the most important exercises uh, to improve your photography. I have been doing this for years and I think it helped me to improve my seeing, my composition, my photography in general. When I was uh, teaching my Visual Poet Experience workshop and work with my students, um, I always see one problem, one mistake that most of us who love photography uh, do when we are crafting and creating our images. By the way, I'm looking at my notes here because uh, this is this is very very important topic and I want to make sure uh, that I can share it with you uh, without any problems. So excuse me if I'm looking quite often on, on my uh, at my notes, okay? So when I'm teaching my visual poet experience workshops and work with my students, I always see one key problem, one mistake that most of us um, make when we photograph. You know, we have a tendency to include too many elements in our frame. And it happens to me all the time. We go out, we shoot, we get excited what is in front of us and we completely forget about what is really in it, what is really needed to be in the frame and we include just too much. We don't have enough time uh, at the scene to really, really observe and craft our image. In other words, we have this tendency to rush our compositions. Uh, this is especially true when we travel to some beautiful exotic locations. We are excited, everything is new around us, and we rush, rush from one image to another. Then we go home and we, we look at our imagery and we often are disappointed. Since uh, most of us right now are stuck at home, there is a way to work on this problem. I call it a post-processing exercise, but really it doesn't have to do anything with post-processing as we understand this. I'm going to show you the most effective ways to improve your seeing, framing, and composition in general. So here is the exercise. When you are in front of your computer, open your imagery from street, travel, or even landscape. And here's important thing. I want you to approach it as a scene you are just standing in front of. So let me repeat. You are in front of your computer. Your image is in front of you. I want you to forget this is your final image. I want you to think that what you see on your computer screen is a scene you are standing in front of as if you were on the street, somewhere when you travel or landscape. Don't look at this very image as a image. Again, look at this as a scene in front of you. Now, imagine that you have a camera with you and ask yourself this very question. 
how would I frame this scene if I was there? How would you frame it? Think exactly the same way you would ask as if you were in the field. I hope you understand what I'm asking here. So let me repeat one more time. I want you to open one of your images on your computer and forget this is the final image. Look at, the, look at this as if it was a scene and you are standing in front of the scene. Take your camera. How would you frame it? I know there are some limitations to this exercise. Of course, we cannot change uh, the perspective or the point of view. Of course, we cannot do it. But we can frame the scene differently. How? Imagine that um, uh, cropping, because that's what we are going to use, is nothing else but a different way of framing the scene. Forget uh, at the moment about um, image quality, pixels. Don't worry about this. This is not what this exercise is all about. Feel free to crop as much as you want. The, the key is, is to capture a great image from the scene that is in front of you. And here is a very, very interesting thing. You can shoot several images from the scene or in other words, the image that is in front of you. But uh, let's get to some examples so you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So here's my first image taken during um, a very foggy day in downtown Vancouver. I was especially attracted to this massive um, elevations of two buildings, these two walls, uh, one uh, with a strong wi white paint when a strong and filtered light uh, is hitting this very wall. And um, in my initial framing, I included some sidewalk and grass at the bottom of my image. You can see it uh, at the bottom. As I was photographing this scene again from the comfort of my home, I realized that the bottom of the image is a distraction. So again, going back what I said at the beginning, uh, notice that uh, I have a scene in front of me. Uh, in other words, I have an image, final image uh, on my computer and I look at it as if I was standing there and photographing this one more time. And take a look how I photograph this scene second time. In other words, here's my crop. Notice that I got rid of the bottom of the image, which I think uh, was a quite a distraction. Here is example number two. In this particular image, I was attracted to a beautiful pocket of light on the sidewalk with the men standing by the entrance to the building. Clearly, as you can see, my framing is quite wide and there are a number of distracting elements, especially near the edge of the frame. I don't think I'll need all these elements. Uh, once I look at this image at home and I started to photograph it again, uh, I noticed just there are too many elements there. So I asked myself, how would I frame the scene again? So I started to explore a few options and here is the framing I went with. So what do you think? 
I think it's much more concise, uh, much more articulate image, and all those distractions on the edges of my frame I'm being taken care of. Another example. This is more, this is not a street photography, but I uh, saw this scene during one of my uh, trips in this particular case in Montana. I love the geometry of the shot, but I really had a hard time to figure out how to frame this. So here is the original image. And when I was, again, photographing in front of my computer, uh, I went for something like this. Take a look. This is the crop and it's totally different image. But that's not all. Sometimes when you have just one image, you can do many, many images out of, uh, out of this one scene. And this is a good example. So again, here is the original uh, scene in front of me. Here is one image that I took, but that's not all. Take a look at this one. That's another image. I just love simplicity of, of this very image with the white snow providing this beautiful negative space. Here is another example uh, of the man standing uh, against a really beautiful geometric uh, background. So here is one image, which by the way, is already slight crop from my original image. You can photograph the scene again. I'm not saying it's going to be better scene, but there's going to be another one more photograph. So take a look at this. We can shoot something like this. Or maybe we can just totally eliminate the, uh, the person and just go with geometry. What do you think? So uh, I hope you right now um, understand my point and I showed you a few examples. Uh, so to summarize, when you come back from your uh, sh shooting session on the street or when you travel or landscape, um, try to do these exercises on a regular basis. It's very important because it helps us to see what we missed when we were out in the field. And next time you go out, your seeing gets better and better. Your composition is more tuned, uh, more precise.